Well, you see the verse, Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So that's it, isn't it? That's all of us. It's a fact and a reality that we're all sinners. It's also a fact that you can't schedule an appointment with a doctor to have it removed. You can't go to the preacher to get it either, although some preachers claim the ability to absolve sins. No, since the one against whom we sin is God, then it is God who has to forgive. And so we have to find ourselves at the feet of the Savior. But why is it like that? Why, why is it that it's so bad? What is it about sin that's just such a terrible thing that, that has affected all of us? And I think there are several things that make it so terrible. And I think one of them is, well, it's literally because it is a violation of God's law by definition, 1 John chapter 3 and verse 4. And if our God loves us and if we love our God, then a violation of His law is obviously a bad thing, right? That ought to be enough. But just in case it's not, another reason that sin is so bad is because, well, it's what separated us from our God who loves us so much, as Isaiah said in Isaiah 59, verses 1 and 2. I mean, it's what separated us from Him. That ought to be enough again, right? But in case it's not, another reason it's so terrible is because of the consequences of sin. I mean, our whole world is filled with the consequences of sin. Luke chapter 4 and verse 6, it's a mess. And we live with it, those consequences every day. We're at odds with our God every day in our world. And we're in a decaying world. I've got to tell you, this is only for us older people now. Uh, if you're under 50, you don't qualify for this yet, but you will. But if you're over 50, I just got to know, how many of you have awakened in the morning with a pulled muscle that wasn't there before you went to sleep just because you slept listen that's kind of humorous till it's your muscle but that's because our bodies are decaying we're not going uphill we're going downhill and that's because we're in a world where sin is now for the younger ones every time your children get sick I'm not saying it's because of their sin, but it's because they live in a world where sin is. There are consequences to sin. We all have to deal with it. It doesn't matter how strong you are. It doesn't matter how weak you are. We all are affected by sin. And that takes us to a place where you've got to ask the question, if it's just that bad, if it affects all of us in that way, then I've got to know, is there, is there any hope beyond this? Is there anything that can be a light at the... At the end of the tunnel, and I've got to say as bluntly as I can, no, there's not, except for in one place. You can't go out here and figure out a solution. You're not going to educate your enough to, yourself enough to find it. You're not going to gain enough money to buy it. No, the only solution is the blood of Jesus. Romans chapter 5 and verse 10, Paul says, For when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of His Son. Much more, having been reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. That's what I want to talk about this morning. I want to talk about that blood of Jesus because what I want to talk about is something that affects all of us or has the ability to affect all of us and provide us with hope. I want us to leave here this morning with hope. So we're talking about the blood of Jesus. And I have three questions. That's my points this morning, three questions. Questions And question number one is why? Why is it that blood is so important? You know, couldn't there have been some other way to do this and some way that maybe is, you know, better for society to accept or something like that? Why did it have to be blood? And to answer that question, you actually have to go back in the Bible. You go all the way back to the time of Noah. And you remember the account of Noah where God's... Uh, proclamation about man is that their thoughts were only evil continually and so God looked over the face of the earth and he found only Noah and his family being righteous and they found grace in God's eyes that's the first time that grace of God is mentioned in the Bible it's in this account of Noah and so he builds this ark by God's instruction and God saves them through the flood and and then there's this there's this time where they depart from this ark and the earth is cleansed and it's 
Well, he builds an altar. And he worships God. And on that occasion, God tells Noah this in Genesis 9, verses 3 and 4. He says, every moving thing that lives shall be food for you. I've given you all things, even as the green herbs. But you shall not eat flesh with its life, that is, its blood. It's about life. What Noah was being told here, which, by the way, was pre-scientific information, which means God said it before we ever knew anything about it. What he told him is that life is in the blood. And that physical characteristic of our existence is also true spiritually. From a human perspective, from a physical perspective, blood is absolutely essential to human life. It gives us the nutrients and the the properties of existence, the ingredients to every tissue of our being that allows us to continue to breathe and live. You cannot exist without blood. I actually read, and, and I assume this is correct because I read it in the history books and not on the internet, uh, but I read that George Washington actually died. They bled him to death. They, he had a disease that some now believe was probably strep, and they thought they could get rid of it by just draining his blood. They literally drained the life out of him. Well, God told us a long time ago that life was in the blood. We just didn't know it yet. Now, as we think about spiritually the aspect of this, and we think about the blood of Christ, what we have to remember is the same thing is true. Blood is absolutely essential to life, spiritually speaking. And I hear it from Paul in Romans chapter 5, in verse 9, when he says that we are justified by blood. Do you know that's why under the Old Testament all of those sacrifices had to be made to teach us about the importance of blood and the significance of the blood of Jesus? So we have to know. The answer to the question is why, why is blood so important? It's because it's where life is found. Which takes us to question number two, and that's this. How essential is it? How vital is actually the blood of Jesus? I get it. I get that blood is, is life and all of that, but how essential is it that it be Jesus' blood here? And I just want to, let me just read some scriptures that kind of hit on this point. How about Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 7 where Paul says, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, he says in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 13, he said, But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were afar off have been made near by the blood of Jesus. Revelation 1 and verse 5, To him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. I think these passages are telling us that the blood of Jesus, that's it. I mean, that's all there is. That is absolutely essential. I think what these passages are saying to us is there was no other option. And these aren't the only passages that talk about it. And there are other passages that tell us the, the same thing. And you know, that, you know that as you consider on the night that Jesus is, is being betrayed, the night that he is in the garden, he is, he is praying in heavy sorrow. And we're told in Matthew 26 and verse 39, he says, Oh, my Father, if it is possible... Let this cup pass from me, not as I will, but as you will. You hear him crying out to his father, and I've got to ask you, if there's another way possible, can a loving God just say, I ah, just go through it anyway? He's not in that garden in that kind of agony, praying for an, a, another easier way and getting rejected because God just didn't want him to take an easier way. There was no easier way. Luke even talks about it in Luke 22 and verse 44 when he says, and being in agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. Why would a father put his son through that? Because that was the only option. That was the only option to save you. It was the only option to save me. His blood. Mine couldn't do it because, well, I'm corrupted by sin. Yours couldn't do it because, well, the same thing. But 
his could. In the book of Hebrews, we're told almost all things, according to the law, almost all things are purged with blood, and without shedding of blood, there's no remission. That's Hebrews 9.22. Of course, that's looking back to the old law. And again, I point out, all of that was trying to tell us something. It was just trying to tell us how bad sin was and how nasty all of this is and what it takes to get rid of it. Again, in Hebrews 10 and verse 4, it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats could take away sins. All that mess that they went through, all the nastiness of those sacrifices didn't get rid of sin. There had to be the one that fulfilled it with his blood. And that's Jesus. Hebrews 9, 12. Not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, he entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. I think you put all those things together and you find out some information about our circumstances and our God. I mean, what we find out there is there's no way to get rid of, get rid of sin without blood being shed, but there's also no way that any of those sacrifices or any animal or any replacement could do it except for Jesus. His blood, the only thing. Nothing but the blood of Jesus can get rid of sin. Is that our invitation song this morning? No. Okay, I'm glad I didn't say that then. Nothing but the blood of Jesus can wash away a sin. You want to know why? You find in the scriptures exactly what the blood of Jesus does for us, and you learn some pretty amazing things. How about this? Revelation 1.5 tells us that only the blood of Jesus gets rid of the guilt of sin. Do you ever feel guilty? You ever been in a situation where you were guilty and your conscience bothered you? And maybe you could get rid of your conscience. You could soothe your conscience. You might try to justify it, but you didn't get rid of the guilt. When it comes to sin, it doesn't matter what you do. You still can't get rid of it. But the blood of Jesus does. Colossians 1.14 tells us that the blood of Jesus redeems us. You know what it means to be redeemed? It means to buy something back. It's the way that we use a coupon. You take it to a store, a manufacturer provides a coupon, and you take it to the store and they buy it back from you for 15 cents off of a jug of milk or something. But when we're talking about our lives, we come into this life sinless. We come into this life innocent. But somewhere along the way, we choose to sin. And when we choose to sin, we become lost. And the blood of Jesus redeems us, buys us back for our Father. We sold ourselves to sin. And he bought us back. Romans 5, 9 tells us that only the blood of Jesus justifies us. You've heard me talk about that word. I love that word. To justify, it means to declare free from guilt. And you have to recognize that when we are guilty, and we are guilty, then we can't go back. You can't just take out an eraser or the delete key on your computer and just let it all go away. It just doesn't go away. But the blood of Jesus justifies us. And the way that we help to understand that word is by breaking it down. Justify, just as if I'd never sinned. He can erase it. Isn't that amazing? Romans 5 and verse 10 tells us that only the blood of Jesus reconciles us. It means to be brought back into a proper relationship, an acceptable, agreeable relationship. It's like, you know, a, a friendship where you have a friendship and you have some kind of a disagreement and so you're kind of aggravated with each other. Maybe you don't talk for a while. Maybe you don't get along anymore. And to reconcile me, that means to overcome that and take it back to where it was before. What he's talking about is our friendship with God. And I break that. My choices, my sins, cause that relationship to be separated. And yet the blood of Jesus takes me back the way it was before. He did that with our relationship with God. The blood of Jesus satisfies divine justice. See, here's the thing. The violation of law requires, even demands, penalty. 
And we already have read a passage that told us that's all of us. And in the very same book, the Apostle Paul says that the, the consequence or the penalty of that is death. So if all of us have sinned and if the consequence of that is death, well, we're condemned, right? How do you satisfy justice? God's law cannot be mocked, not for God to be holy and righteous. So how is that satisfied? Well, he did it by providing the sacrifice himself. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 18 and 19, where Peter says, Knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers. He's saying you weren't redeemed by the blood of bulls and goats of, of your past tradition of the Jewish system. But, he says, with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish, and without spot. I don't think that I don't think that could be any more clear. I mean the bottom line is it's really very simple. We violated God's law. That's sin. And there's only one way to make that right. It's not going to be my my goodness or it's not going to be by my abilities or my talents. It's going to be because Christ the perfect one came here to this life and he did not corrupt his life by choosing to sin. Though he faced all the temptations like we do, he didn't sin. And so then he became qualified to be our sacrifice, to pay and experience the divine justice. Which takes me to question three. If I know that we all need it, and if I know there's only the blood of Jesus that's going to get rid of sin, i got to know how. How can I have access to the benefits of the blood of Jesus? And I actually have this in every single sermon. I just think it ought to be expounded upon every once in a while. And this morning's that day. If the blood of Jesus is essential, and absolutely it is, we've seen that already, then how do I access it? How do I know that the sin, the guilt in my life, the reconciliation that's needed the redemption that's needed, the justification that I need. How do I know where to find that? Where to obtain that for my life? Is there somewhere that the Bible actually gives me an idea of how I can know when God washes away the sins in my life, the guilt by the blood of Jesus? Well, before I answer that question, I want to give you a principle that is applicable in every area of life. A cleansing agent, in order to work, has to actually come into contact with that thing that needs clean, cleansed, right? I know the guys are not going to understand this, but the wives sure are. If you have laundry detergent and you put the dirty laundry in the washer and you set the laundry detergent on the top of the washer and turn it on, those clothes are not going to get clean. Doesn't do any good at all, does it? In order for it to work, the detergent actually has to come into contact with the dirty laundry, right? And that principle is also true with our lives. If we have sin and the blood of Jesus is what washes us free from our sin, then in order for it to do that, it has to contact our sin, right? So we have to contact the cleansing agent. Is there somewhere where we can figure out how that happens? Well, you know that Jesus shed his blood at Calvary, right? He died on the cross. Well, John talks about that in John 19, verses 33 and 34, when he says this. He says, when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs, but one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and immediately blood and water came out. He shed his blood in his death. Well, that's reasonable, isn't it? It's logical. That's what we all believe. I don't know anybody that would argue that point. What does that have to do with how I contact it? Well, it's actually rather simple. In Romans chapter 6, the Apostle Paul is telling people why they should be living differently, people who are Christians, why they should grow and live differently. And he goes back to their birth, not physically, but spiritually, with these words. In Romans 6, verses 3 through 4, he says, do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? There it is. Now he's got a connecting word. 
Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should also we also should walk in newness of life. You hear what he said? I am buried in baptism, and then that baptism I am buried also into his death, which, by the way, John just said is where he shed his blood, which might explain why when I am raised from that watery grave of baptism, I can be a new creature because his blood, what did we say? Redeems us, reconciles us, justifies us, forgives us. It's a cleansing agent a cleansing agent that I don't deserve. It's a cleansing agent that I don't earn. It's a cleansing agent that I'm never going to be good enough for. And when he cleanses me, he also adds me to his body. That's what happened with those 3,000 on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, verses 39, 41, and 47. That's actually what the Bible says. It's not some man invented sinner's prayer that asking the Lord into your heart, that's not found anywhere in the Bible. Anywhere. But being buried with Him, allowing God to contact our sins with His blood, is. And it's what God said. You can, you can be mad at me. Maybe somebody is right now. You're mad. We just read the passage. It's just what God says. The answer to the question, what can wash away my sins? There's only one answer. The blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Now here's the thing. Knowing what we know, what God says about who we are and about the blood of Jesus and about accessing that blood, I have to recognize how much God desires for me and you to be saved. I mean, look at how he has provided for us. Do we deserve to be saved? No. Do we deserve God's love? No. Do we deserve his son's sacrifice on the cross for us? No. And yet God provides all of that opportunity. God provides. God provides the cleansing agent that can remove every sin and keep us in God's blessing. And then so we can say with Paul, but God forbid that I should glory except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. I don't have anything to be proud about. God provided. You want to know something? Somebody goes out in a boat and they drown. They have an accident and they drown. And the question comes up, what, why did they drown? What happened? And somebody says, well, they fell out of the boat. And that's not why they drowned. They drowned because they were in the water. It doesn't matter why they got there or how they got there. They drowned because they were in the water. You stand before God in judgment lost. You could just come up with every, why, why, what put him there? Well, maybe his parents didn't teach him. Maybe he didn't hear the truth. Maybe he didn't know the truth. It doesn't matter. We're not lost because we haven't heard the truth. We're not lost because of man's invention. We're lost because of sin. That's what causes us to be lost. And the only thing that gets rid of sin is God through the blood of Jesus. So if you're here this morning and you're not a Christian, that's your question. Why would you walk out of here without the blood of Jesus? Because just like we read this morning in the scriptures, everything's ready here for you to do exactly what we read. If you do believe that Jesus is the Son of God, you believe what he said, you're willing to stand before man and confess that, then what you do is you are buried into his death because that's where his blood was shed. And you won't see it happen physically because this is a spiritual action by God himself where he will apply the blood of Jesus to your sins and save you. The only one who can. And if you're a Christian who turned away from him, you need his blood back in your life. But you've got to come home to him to find it. Whatever your needs are, if you